Well, bronchoscopy is a, a test similar to many other endoscopic procedures that people can have, such as gastroscopies, etc. Um, the difference is that a bronchoscopy is passed either through the mouth or the nose down into the main airway. So first into the trachea, and then we can actually branch off and look all the way down the lungs. If you have a look at this picture here of the two lungs, the, uh, the telescope will be passed down and then individually into the first lung and look around all the different lobes of the lung, pull back and then we look down the other lung. Now, if a tumour is present close to the main airways, we can usually see that with the bronchoscope, we'll see a, a view of that, and we'll send out a biopsy forceps to directly take a piece of that tumour, and that makes getting the answer uh, to what's going on much easier. Sometimes the tumour is uh, out in the branches well beyond what our bronchoscope can reach, uh, but even in that situation, sometimes if we if we wash some saline fluid out into the tissues, out into the lung, and suck that back again, then it can collect a few loose cancer cells, and the pathologist can once again diagnose the cancer. Now, most bronchoscopies are done under sedation, so uh, so a patient will be uh, unaware of the procedure, but they won't be fully um, anaesthetised. Um, that can result in a bit of coughing during the procedure, um, but afterwards the patient usually doesn't feel anything other than uh, maybe a bit of a tickle, a bit of a cough for the remainder of the day, and may sometimes cough up little flecks of blood where we've, from where we've been biopsying, uh, and that's usually a self-limiting thing and it's only temporary. If we work out that a cancer appears operable, so we think that that it hasn't spread beyond the lung and we think that the we can actually remove the whole tumour with surgery, then the um, the obvious or the, the most um, standard procedure is called a lobectomy. And that standard procedure involves a thoracotomy, which is a cut around the, the side of the chest. Um, where we, we actually have to open up the ribs, obviously the patient is asleep and unaware of this. Um, and we actually have to identify the airway and the vessels that go to that section of the lung. We, we divide them and then we remove the, the lobe. The lobe would usually be about that big. And we remove that through the thoracotomy. Uh, we also remove the glands or the lymph nodes that the, that the lung cancer could potentially spread to and they're usually situated down the middle of the, the chest and we send those off to the pathologist as well. At the end of the procedure we reclose the chest and the muscles, put the ribs back together and a patient would generally spend about a month, uh, sorry, a week in hospital and um, the patient would wake up with a chest tube or sometimes two chest tubes um, a chest tube for lung cancer surgery would probably be about as wide as a finger and that drains to a little uh, plastic unit which basically drains away any ooze. If there's any leaking from the surface of the lung of air that'll keep that out of the chest um, and allow the lung to return to normal as quickly as possible. And most people to get fully over that would probably take six weeks to three months probably to uh, be fully uh, back to full action after that um, and uh, if someone initially is a bit borderline they've got um, either got some heart disease or they've got some lung disease from smoking it may take them a little bit longer to get their full breathing capacity back. Well besides curative surgery where we try to remove the tumour altogether um, we do do what's called palliative surgery and the aim of the palliative surgery is in patients that we can't necessarily cure we want to either relieve symptoms they, they have that are very disturbing or um, we want to improve their quality of life by improving their ability to breathe for example. Now the, the types of palliative surgery um, we do are quite varied some are aimed at making sure that the airways um, are clear of tumour. For example, a patient may have all or part of a lung blocked by 
tumour and we will do a, bron a bronchoscopy we put the telescope down the airway and then using that bronchoscope we can actually aim a laser to actually clear out the airway and that allows the patient's air to come in and out of the lung the way it should. Occasionally tumours will wrap around an airway and actually crush it from the outside in which case a laser is not um, suitable for treating that but we may be able to put a, uh, a special tube called a stent inside that and that stent springs the airway back open and forces open the airway and the patient again can breathe. Another way a patient can become very short of breath is accumulation of fluid around the lung. So the chest is a rigid cavity and the lung is very compressible, it's mostly air. So if you accumulate fluid around the lung, the lung will be crushed and the patient will have difficulty breathing. The way we can relieve that simply is by putting a tube into the chest but often that fluid will reaccumulate so in that case we need to do what's called a pleurodesis and we do this with a keyhole surgery um, we put a special telescope into the chest through a small hole called a thor we call it a thoracoscope and through that hole we can drain out all of the fluid and then uh, spray a talcum like powder inside the chest and that actually allows the lung to come up and stick to the chest wall and eradicate that space where the fluid is accumulating. And the patient will be in hospital for a few days after that with a chest drain to keep it all dry while that is going to work. And then that has a very high um, uh, success rate in for preventing further fluid accumulation and improving the patient's breathing. Um, sometimes um, lung cancer can spread to other parts of the body and surgery is required to alleviate symptoms at that uh, location. A classic one would be to the brain, a patient may have a uh, metastasis, so a secondary cancer um, form in the brain and the patient may appear to have had a stroke um, and after diagnosis of this um, there's a lot of swelling around the tumour which is why the patient is, um, is suffering from a, a stroke-like condition and a neurosurgeon can actually remove that uh, metastasis and often very rapidly um, the patients recover their, their function so they're back to pretty much normal and most of those patients would then have radiation to try and prevent further metastases in the brain. Um, other sites in the body are uh, things like bones. The, if a metastasis appears in a hip bone, for example, then a patient could have a hip fracture. Um, and sometimes surgery is required to stabilise those sort of fractures.